everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take images from a 360 camera, well, not one like this, more like one like this, and take those images and prepare them for 3D Gaussian splatting, or really any Nerf project that you wanna use. So follow along, this is kind of a beginner's tutorial. There is ways to do it, it gives you a way more control, but this one should work for you to get started. So here we go. Okay, so there's more than one way you can take the imagery from a 360 camera. And in this example, I am I have this 360 video footage, and this is from my Insta360 um, RS11 inch, whatever. And you can see that I, I kind of have it on a pole above my head. This is not a perfect capture. I got the sun flare coming in, you can see this. I had a friend walking with me. Um, I would suggest putting this camera right above your head so you have like the least amount of shadow, the least amount of whatever you can. Do it on a, sh a, a, a day that's not very, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of sun coming in. This sun flare is definitely not great. Um, but another thing I always think about when doing something like this is that you need this parallax motion. So we don't really see like this wall from multiple places, right? So that's happening, that's great. If you're out in like the middle of nowhere and things aren't really moving across the scene, that's not gonna help. Um, so you can capture a video or you can capture interval still. So I also like taking like a two second interval still, getting the highest resolution possible. Um, but then when you go to export this thing, so I can go over here, this is Insta360 software. Just make sure when you say export 360 video, you bump that bit rate up, you bump everything up, the resolution's the top resolution. It's gonna be a gigantic uh, file, I'm guessing. But yeah, you wanna make sure you get the full quality of the imagery. Another thing to think about is, let me just bring up my, my drawing software here. Let's just say I'm going down an alleyway here. So like this is a wall like this, right? And here's another wall. And I'm gonna be walking down this thing like so with my camera, just like I did in that video. Um, well, that's great. And I'm going to see parts of this wall as I move along. Uh, the best thing you could do is actually walk down to this part and then you would take a quick turn. Well, not quick, but you just wanna then move over and then move over again. So in the end, you kind of get like this box. And what's happening is I'm gonna capture this scene from not only one walk down, but then on my way back. And this could be a box if it's a bigger area. You just kind of want to move around. And what that means then is that as I'm looking at the scene later on, I can move anywhere between this. So as I let me bring my Google tool. Um, as I'm moving through this this Gaussian splat, I can kind of like move around. Uh, that is the wrong tool to show you what that looks like. Um, here's the pencil. Um, you know, I could kind of like move anywhere around inside this area and things should look fairly consistent. Another strategy is perhaps move down this alleyway or scene at one elevation and then have a selfie stick and raise it up several feet. And that way, instead of moving back and forth between that area, you can move up and down and everything will stay consistent. Because if you get too far from your, your camera poses, things fall apart. Um, so just kind of getting back to the imagery you're just gonna export this, export to a folder somewhere, and you should be good to go. <clears throat> so the next thing we will need to do is either extract images from this 360 vi uh, video output, and you wanna make sure it's the, like equal rectangular, or you, want, um, or you can work with the stills, but I'm gonna assume you just have video. So let me just jump into command prompt and show you using FFmpeg how to then strip out these like frames from this walk down this alleyway and use those um, for my Insta360 capture to a nerf or a Gaussian splatting. Okay, so now I have this MP4 file, which um, you can see was me walking down this alleyway that I, ex I extracted. Um, oh, okay, so I, I'm actually using a different one, but it me just by myself, it'll be a little bit more clean. Um, again, the lighting's not perfect, but this is one I'm gonna show you how we're gonna extract image stills from this. So let me just close this file. And I'm assuming you have FFmpeg installed. You're gonna need to install it no matter what you do, it's pretty easy. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to open up command from this screen and open up a fresh command prompt. You just type CMD in the search bar here. 
Um, and I'm gonna make an output folder. Let's call this new folder. And I call this um, images under bar 360. So this is my 360 images. And I wanna get these to 2D images when I'm done. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna use uh, FFmpeg. So FFmpeg, FFmpeg. And that's something you should already have installed. If not, you can look up how to install that. Um, and then you're gonna go space dash I, and then your input video. So if I type in Ritters and hit tab, it should complete because we're in this folder. And then space <clears throat> dash VF here. I'm going to copy and paste it for the heck of it. I'll make sure it's in the notes here. VF FPS. Um, you can specify how many frames per second. Let's look at this video. <clears throat> it's only 23 seconds. So I'm going to want like three or four frames per second. So let's make that. Let's make it three. And then uh, don't worry about this like Q scale, but then it's going to do this image 360 folder that I created and then name them. So hit enter. It's going to run. And if I go to image 360 folder, you'll see it start to populate with these 360 images. And that's me moving down the alleyway. So that's perfect. So the next thing I want to do is I got to split up these 360 images into individual um, <clears throat> cube map images. So those are like, if I took a cube and mapped the images to it, it'll make it up. And that'll make sense in a second. So I'm actually gonna quit this command line. And at this point, you're gonna need to install some special software called Meshroom. Okay, so you're gonna need to download Meshroom. And when you do that, you're going to go to the older versions because in the newer version, they've changed how things work. So you won't be able to follow this. So I'm gonna make sure you go down and you pick the 2021.1.0 link for Windows. I'll make sure I link that in the, the, the show description as well as in my instructions I have written out. Um, and so once you've downloaded that, you end up with a, a zip folder. So if I go to my downloads, um, like so. So if I go to my, so if I go with my downloads and I open this up, I'm gonna extract it all and this will take a second. So let me just jump into when that's done and I'll show you where to put this folder. Okay, it's just finishing up. Uh, I will have in my downloads this mesh room folder. I'm just gonna open up, there's a subfolder. I'm just gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna put it in my, uh, my just kind of like my Joe on T file, my, my user uh, folder. You can put this anywhere, put in like C, just put somewhere you can always find. Um, I'm going to open it up and then I want to go to Alice vision and then the bin folder. So now, okay, I got where the root directory I had it in mushroom, Alice vision, bin folder from there. I'm just going to type in CMD to launch command prompt from that folder. So I don't have to like, path to it or anything. At this point I can, I can, I can close out this, this window I'm going to put this here like so get rid of this. I'm just gonna make this big. And then um, then you just gotta, you're gonna run a script that's gonna take these 360 images and turn them into 2D images. So let me just, uh, let me just show you how that works. So first thing you're gonna go to is you're gonna type in Alice Vision um, and then under bar utils and then just start tabbing. What you're gonna look for is one that's called um, you're gonna find one that's called split 360 images.exe. And then from there, you're going to put in a couple of parameters. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this from a, a cheat sheet I have. Um, but um, the first thing you actually do is go dash I, and then that's the image directory, so it says 360 dash, um, dash O. Um, I've created this images folder, so that's where I want the 2D images to go. Throw that in there. Super easy. Then space, and then this is again where I'm going to copy and paste. Um, I have two parameters. So the first one is I'm going to split it into eight cubes, so like or eight cube faces. Um, so you're going to end up with like a bunch of different images cube mapped. And then you're going to have this um, split resolution. So each image will be 1200 by 1200. You can kind of do the math, figure out if that actually makes sense for the size of input imagery you did. 
but that's a pretty standard number there. I'm gonna hit enter and it's going to start running. Um, doesn't take very long. So it's gonna go through these images and it's going to image at a time. If I go into this folder, you'll see that it's starting to split this up and I'm gonna show what those look like. So if I open one up, you'll see there's my square 1200 by 1200 image. Notice it's not the highest quality. Probably because I was, I mean, I went video to, to extracted image. Um, it would look better definitely if I was using stills as high res as possible. But that's what you end up with is like these kind of stills. And so as I, I didn't mean to open up more than one. As I go around, you can see I'm kind of going in a circle. And then I eventually progress as I keep going through these. I'm getting further down the alleyway. Tons of parallax seen in all directions. Let me just close that. So this is still running. And when it's done, we're pretty much ready to start making our, our 3D Gaussian splat scene. So wherever this ends up being. So I have this in some working folder. When you're done, you'll have your folder of images. And I'm just going to copy and paste this into my Gaussian splatting project. So um, I have my data folder. If you ever watch how I get ready to get started, I had a data folder. Um, actually, I have a archive. Here we go. So this data folder um, of this exact alley. And you can paste it in here, but you want to paste it in as input. So this images folder will, you know, you would, you would go and I would paste it in here and then I would rename it to input because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, and then from here, it gets pretty easy. Um, so once this is done, I'm just going to let this run. When it's done, you're going to, you know, you're going to start your, your prompt. I'll start a fresh prompt here. And then make sure you s change directory to your, um, your Gaussian splatting folder and make sure you conda activate ng, uh, sorry, activate Gaussian splatting. Like so. Once you've got that set up, then again, you just do the, you're going to do the convert.py conversion. And then you're going to do dash S and then just drag that input in there. And it'll run cold map. It'll do the, everything for you. And in the end, you'll end up with this, this, um, gr this great um, output where you'll have your distorted, you'll have <clears throat> your images, which I, I think I renamed here, like so. And then all the other cool map stuff you need. And then, again, back into your, your, your condo. Once that's done, is, uh, you're just going to run then the train.py. And again, that same source folder. Um, which is the you know the top down folder here, so you just you're just gonna run that, okay. So then when you're ready to so this is so okay now it's all been trained and I'm not gonna go through all that because you should know how that works by now. Um, if you don't go watch my video, make sure I have a link in there as well. Um, you're just gonna go then take the the results and I'm just gonna show you what they look like in the viewer really quickly. So at this point I'm just gonna change directory to the viewers slash bin and then the cyber viewer slash m that put model Let's see what that looks like output alley it's gonna copy and paste that path and we'll launch the viewer and we can see what this looks like all right so here it is um so one downside is because again I didn't, I didn't extract like my head out of it. I'm like in all these. So um, let me just change this to trackball and make this a little bigger. Like so. Um, it doesn't look pretty unless you're kind of like near the path which you've taken it. Nerfs can do better or worse at this. Um, but here we go. So now I'm, I'm kind of moving. Things look great. Um, it's going to kind of have the spherical look. I, um, I don't have, I, 
I don't have the top above me, so if I go look straight up, there will be a hole in the ceiling, which may or may not be good. Um, but here, let me just kind of move around. You can see from certain angles, things look great. But that's because the capture on this was not the best. But here we go. We have a 360 scene. I'm moving through the alleyway. A lot of the cars look awesome. Um, if I was to walk back and forth and get a lot more imagery, this would have been great. Um, um, one thing I do want to point out with the myth that I did, um, if you go and you look at these images again, you notice it split it at ho like horizontally. I did not get above me. I did not get below me. So that's why it's kind of nice to, as you go along, make sure, like, what's the goal? What's the intended goal of this scene? Do you want to look up high? Do you want to look up low? I mean, what's your focus? I will have more tutorials on how to capture like a bigger viewpoint, but this is the easiest way to get started. So I hope I didn't lose any of you guys on any of this and notice like that, you know, this isn't the greatest imagery and the darks here. Part of that's the camera, part of that is the day and the light, but that's how you do it in a nutshell. I've had some fantastic results um, and that's how you do it. And you can take the same image set and you can train it with practically any one of these. You can use this with photogrammetry apps. It will work. So there you go. That's just a simple way. Now go make it some 3D Gaussian splats or some nerfs and make sure you share them with me because I will put them all over the planet and put them on the internet. I love to see what people are doing with these cameras. Um, and if anyone's interested, I do have this really nice camera. I do have this six camera version. This is 200 degree images and I can show you how to take natively each one of those and make a really nice nerf as well. So I look forward to see you guys in the next video. Next one will probably be how to put this in Unity. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe.